Hello to everybody. Um, I'm happy to participate in this symposium. And uh, my name is Antonio Suarez. I work at the University of Granada in Spain. And I want to show you some data that we have uh, collected from, uh, from the Cognitive Study, uh, specifically on, on how the uh, enrichment with uh, milk, fat, uh, milk fat global membranes and LCPF and, and symbiotics have changed the, uh, uh, the pattern of uh, microbiome uh, maturation and devolution in, in children. In the talk, uh, in the talk, I will show you how the how the microbiota has has changed in the cognitive study from the first month to the eighteen months of life. And uh, we we did this experiment uh, first by, by classifying the microbiota by by enterotypes. Then we uh, studied the enterotypes and uh, studied their structure, the uh, composition and diversity to uh, move to the evolution. Uh, we have four time points for, for, for each child and we wanted to know whether the enterotypes changed in, during the evolution of the, of, the, of, the, of the infants. And we tested it in connection with the time points, with the age and the intervention of the study. We study also the dynamics. The dynamics, I will show you data on how case by case, the children evolved, changing their enterotypes. And, uh, and that, that's what we call trajectories. And we will, I will show you that uh, the children have different trajectories on how the, the, their enterotypes evolve, depending on the, on the diet, of the intervention study. And finally, uh, I will show you the last day down on the impact of the new formula on, on the probiotics in, uh, in children. Well, we all know that the breast milk composition is uh, the gold standard. Uh, it's composed by many different compounds. And uh, I want to stress that the ex experimental formula of the cognitive study was enriched in, in uh, two uh, lipid molecules, uh, essentially in, in milk from global membranes. Uh, it was enriched in this special sort of, of uh, fat presentation, also in LCPUFA and in the uh, in symbiotics. Symbiotics is um, a mixture between uh, uh, the addition of both the probiotic, the sugar in this case, and the prebiotic, the bacteria. So the idea of the symbiotics that you provide the sugar and the bacteria, so the sugar that promote the growth of, of the beneficial bacteria. So this formula, uh, uh, and the difference with the previous formula is that it has been enriched in these three, uh, three different compounds. Uh, in, with the idea of trying to mimic as much as possible the, the, the composition of, of human breast milk. The cognitive study was designed in, uh, in the collection of samples in a long period. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, the collection has now ended the sixth year of sample uh, um, and data retrieval from the infants. And there were three groups. Uh, the, the standard formula with 85 children, the new formula with the addition of these mem global membranes and the symbiotics and the LCPFA, and a control group of exclusively breastfed infants. And uh, samples were collected in all these periods and uh, we will concentrate on the initial part of the evolution of the colonization of the uh, gut by, by, by bacteria. So um, the first data I'm going to show you is the uh, uh, microbial um, perspective of, of the samples. Here you have the phylogeny. That's, this means the, uh, the classification, taxonomic uh, classification of bacteria. On the right, you have the genera. This, we have retrieved the 30 most abundant genera in, in all the samples. Here we have more than 400 samples that were collected from the children. And uh, you can see there are quite different mm, uh, taxonomical profiles in, uh, from the first to the 18 month. So we had the initial data on, on the microbiota of these children. And we wanted to know whether the composition of this study was uh, affected or was influenced by 
study variables. We have in the economy study a lot of uh, different variables where were collected from, from the parents and the children. And in this graph, what I show you is that uh, are the uh, collection of sample of, sorry, of variables that had some, some significant effect on the microbiota composition. On the left, you have the all, so the age by far was the, the, the variable that most affected microbiota composition by far, followed by the type of feeding, here, this new, we have the standard formula, experimental formula on the breastfed children, breastfeeding days, daycare, whether the children were in home raised or in, in nursery or in school, and the smoking, family smoking habits, antibiotics, diarrhea, and then some uh, information on, on solid food intake, meat, fish, and, and, and fruits and vegetables. Uh, this, so the in the whole experiment, the, the variable with the highest impact was age. But when we uh, uh, stratify by, by months, uh, we can then clearly see that type of feeding was extremely important at the uh, 6, 12, and 18 months. Also, with uh, the breast feeding, how, how many days was that child breastfed mix, in the mixed feeding? How many days the, the child was breastfed? So these are by far the three and most important variables in the study affecting microbiota composition. And then, as I said before, uh, we search for enterotypes. Enterotypes um, is uh, a way of classification humans depending on the composition of the gut microbiota, on the overall composition of the gut microbiota. And uh, this has uh, has been extensively studied and used in many different papers. And we wanted to test whether we could detect different configurations in the microbiota of the children in these 400 samples. So for, and we wanted to know whether intervention, the dietary intervention uh, um, could affect the presentation of, um, of these enterotypes and their evolution is changing and shifts along the, the growing the, the, of, the, of the child. For that, we used a, a system. It's called uh, the Dirichlet Multinomial Mixture Components. It's a, it's, an, it is a statistical system that allows for uh, detection of uh, enterotypes in, in, uh, in uh, microbiota uh, samples. When uh, we use this, um, this algorithm, uh, the algorithm identified uh, four and different enterotypes. See, the least number of enterotypes that best describe the 400 samples. So it was quite surprising because we have uh, uh, in literature, the number of enterotypes in this range of ages, uh, normally is three to three different enterotypes. And in our, uh, in our data set, we, uh, the system identified four different enterotypes. These four different enterotypes uh, this, uh, this is the heat map. Each line represents a genera, but you see the name on the, on the right side. And every vertical line is a sample. So we, uh, the, the, the algorithm produced this heat map and told us that there were four different enterotypes, two reasonably big in the number of samples and two with a, 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 least a reduced number of samples that were then depicted in gray, in gray and, and red. So we had the four enterotypes and we had the genera that drive these enterotypes. Um, and these are the genera that uh, drive the configuration of the different enterotypes. And on the left side, we have the drivers of the, of the first enterotype. These are the bacteria that determine this enterotype. And if you see on the left, there are different colors because some of them belong to the Firmicutes taxa in, in orange. Some belong to bacteriolites in blue and some of them are, are protobacteria. Indeed, when you look at the taxonomical names, it is a mix of aerobic and anaerobic bacteria. So uh, when we determine this enterotype, we decided to call it mixed. The mixed, mixed anaerobic, mixed aerobic 
um, bacteria. The second enterotype was determined mostly by the abundance of one genera, and that genera is the unclassified Dangospiraceae. So uh, since this enterotype was determined by this, by this genera, we call it ULAC from unclassified uh, uh, Lagnospiraceae. The third enterotype is, is also dominated by a single genera, though some others contribute to the uh, profiling of this enterotype, but it's mostly determined by the abundance of bacteroidetes, bacteroides in this case. So we call it BAC. And the last one was determined mostly by, by two genera, but all of them, uh, except for bacteroides, they all belong to the Firmicutes uh, phyla, phylum. So in this case, we decided to call it firm. So we have four enterotypes. The first one with this mix of aerobic and anaerobic bacteria, two determined by two genera, and classified anaspiracea and bacteroides, and the last one by a mix of Firmicutes bacteria. In, when we looked at the data, um, we, we, in this algorithm, we introduced 87 genera, 87. Only 19 were enough to describe this enterotype. So these, are the most, these are the most important genera in our samples to define the enterotypes, only 19. Um, the contribution to the, to the, to the clustering of these enterotypes to the organization is quite dissimilar. For example, bacteroides is present as a driver in the four enterotypes, but mostly in the third, as we showed previously. Um, and classified Anospiracea is also present in the four different enterotypes, but it determine, determines more the, the uh, enterotype in the ULAC and firm. And then the rest of the genera are present in some or, or, or um, of the uh, other enterotypes. In a, a few, the last ones are exclusively present in one enterotype, like for example, Enterococcus, Clesiella, Lactobacillus, Clostridium, and Escherichia, they are present exclusively in the mixed enterotype. So these 19 genera really define the, the most important uh, um, drivers of, of the different enterotypes. And we wondered, these 19 genera, how much do they account for the overall composition of the microbiota? And as you can see here, uh, the, um, these uh, genera accounted for more than 85% of all the readings in the microbiota experiment. So these are obviously the most important genera in abundance in, in our sample set. And they cover more than 70, depending on the, the firms, the, the one with the least uh, accounting uh, data, but it's over 75, more than uh, almost 80% of, of the uh, microbiota. The, the composition of the enterotypes is quite different. So on the left, you have the Firmicutes factorietes ratio that has been extensively used in uh, microbiota studies. And of course, the, the one with the, the lowest uh, ratio is the backed enterotype. And on your right, you have the composition of phenol level and where you have actinobacteria in blue, uh, bacteritis in green, filmicutus in red, and protobacteria in purple. And you can see that there are four very different uh, distributions of composition in the four different sets of, of enterotypes. So they are different in composition, and they are also in diversity. Um, this is quite important because um, for a long time, it's still, it's still a debate whether the alpha diversity uh, of bacteria do truly inform about the uh, health of sample. Still, uh, we, we, uh, we use this uh, alpha diversity indexes on top the number of species that increases over, uh, with, the, with, the, with the enterotypes, the least number of species in the mixed enterotype and the highest in the, in the last one, the firm. And when we look at the diversity in the middle, the also diversity increases with the, with the different enterotypes. And finally, the, uh, the last one on the bottom, the phylogenetic diversity. So they, are not, they, they not only have more species, 
with increased diversity, but they are also phylogenetically different. So this corresponds with the, with the data that we already had, and then we studied the beta structure of the, of the samples. We used the bright Cartes distance to, uh, in, a, in, a, in a double space, try to uh, uh, define whether the samples were similar or dissimilar between themselves. And the data show that um, those belonging to the mixed enterotype were quite dissimilar to the rest of the sample. And if you look at the dots, uh, mm, the cordangle corresponds to the first month in the, and the cross to the sixth month. So apparently, uh, this was the first data that we had that the mixed enterotype was present in the first and sixth month of the samples. Then we had the ULAC enterotype uh, that was quite similar to the, to the mixed one. And then we had the uh, backed also in a separated group and the firm enterotype. And this separation was significant, showing that the composition of the four enterotypes were, were fairly different between the, the data. But then, do enterotypes associate with the most important variables in our study? The most important variables in our study were, I remind you, the time. The, the, the chrono sequence of the cognitive study, one month, six months, 12 months, 18 months, and the type of feeding because this is an intervention study. So we made this test. It is a statistical test where we make three associations. We associate the enterotypes on the left with the time of the sampling time on the, on the top and with the feeding group on the right. From this plot, we could de significantly determine that the first month of age in our samples, most samples belong to the mixed enterotype. type. The sixth, the sixth month had a mix of sample between that had the mixed enterotype type or the ULAC enterotype. The 12th month set of samples was more enriched in the ULAC and back enterotype. And finally, the last 18 month samples were enriched in ULAC back and most of it in the firm uh, enterotype. So as you can see down, mix from mix ULAC, ULAC back, the, apparently there is, a, 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 there is a significant association. So that the, there is uh, an, an evolution of the enterotypes. Apparently, mix is more enterotype of the beginning of the colonization, while the firm enterotype is more the last part. Back and firm enterotype are more of the last part of the colonization in the children. So this is belong, uh, in, in depending on age. What happens when we look at the data depending on the diet? Well, the breastfed infants um, only show in these four time, uh, from time points, they only show the, the mixed and ULAC enterotypes. Um, this was surprising because we thought that there would be a mix of enterotypes in this children, but they, they only showed the mix and the ULAC enterotype. When you looked at the standard formula, um, the standard formula, apparently the children start uh, all with the mixed enterotype, but then, mm, the transition the, at the sixth day are more in the ULAC and the, in the in the 12th month they are more in the ULAC uh, in the back enterotype and finally in the 18th month they have more samples in the firm enterotype. So there is a time evolution associated with the with the diet. And when we looked at the experimental data, we have we found a different evolution. Apparently at the six months, samples were a mix between the mixed enterotype on top, the ULAC enterotype in the middle, and the firm enterotype at the bottom. So there was some sort of uh, effect from, from the um, experimental formula on the enterotype evolution in children compared with the standard formula. Significant. So we 
use this model, the Markov chain model, to understand how these uh, um, enterotypes were were uh, transitioning in the with the time in the children. And as an example, I show first the breastfed enterotypes. On the blue is the mixed. I told you almost all children belong to the mix and you lack. You can see that uh, the mix enterotype, half of the samples still uh, uh, retain this, this enterotype with time. And the other half of the samples evolve to the ULAC enterotype in yellow. And the samples, when the children are in the ULAC enterotype, 83% of the samples remain in this enterotype. And just one move to uh, what 17% and 7% of the samples move to the firm or back to enterotype. So apparently, breastfed infants, exclusively breastfed infants, stay in the mix and you lack enterotypes. When we looked at the um, at the standard formula, the, the, the uh, dark um, uh, shadow lines showed you the most important changes in the transitions of the enterotypes. And apparently, they all started in the mix in blue on top. But most of them, 55%, uh, moved to the ULAC enterotype. At this time point, a few 23 stayed in the enterotype, but 50% again moved to the uh, uh, back enterotype in gray on, on the bottom. At this stage, 50% again stayed at this, um, at this, um, at this enterotype, but then 30% moved to the firm enterotype. In red, what I show you is um, backward transitions when. Um, when the sample is in the back enterotype and then the last sample is returns to the ULAC enterotype. In this case, the 18%. So, so that in this evolution, there are some children where the enterotypes go backwards in time to, to the previous most abundant enterotype. In the experimental formula, the transitions were fairly different from the standard formula, as I showed you before. And they started in the all in the mix. The um, forty-one percent goes to the ULAC enterotype, but then at this stage, uh, forty-two percent of the samples move to the firm enterotype. And in if, if this, those that go to the back enterotype at the bottom, most of them, them go to the firm. But apparently, the firm enterotype is more more the the last stage of this of these children. There are also transitions in, in these samples, uh, retrogressions, um, the, where, the, where the enterotypes go backwards. So there are children that reach the firm enterotype, but 50% of them return to, to a previous enterotype, in this case, the back enterotype. So the enterotypes in the different sets of children were, were evolving in different manners. When we uh, mm, separated the cases by children and we searched for the evolution of the enterotypes, we detected 26 different ways of evolving in time. In the 18 months, there are cases where the where the children uh, go to a previous enterotype. We looked at these special cases where, where there was these changes in the evolution of the enterotypes, and we identified that there was a significant association with the uh, diarrhea events. So apparently, diarrhea is a major a major dis uh, disturbation of uh, disturbance of 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 the uh, trajectories, and and when children suffer diarrhea. Uh, there is a, ch a high chance, chance that uh, the, the, the configuration of the whole uh, microbiota changes and, and, and goes back to, to, a previous, to a previous state. 
um, the prevalence, how many children show these trajectories? Well, um, this is the prevalence of the children in the, of the samples. And as you can see, breastfed, in this case in blue, uh, they show they are at the bottom of the, of the trajectories. And gray, gray, uh, red samples are the standard formula. They are uh, mostly in the upper part of the trajectories. And apparently, the experimental formula is distributed along the, uh, the 26 trajectories. Um, when, this, when, we are, when, when we obtain this graph, um, we thought that there might be some sort of shift of, uh, uh, depending on the type of feeding. Like, like, like type of feeding was affecting the trajectories of the children, the preference of trajectories. And when we looked at the, at the density distribution, we could see this effect more clearly in the, in deleting the retrogressions, those that go back, okay? When, when you delete the retrogressions, um, you could see that the density, the, the, the samples were, dis were not distributed uh, homogeneously in, in their trajectories. The blue, in this case, the breastfed infants, as you can see, they, they mostly belong to the trajectories on the left those with the high number of mixed and fertile. The red sample, this belongs to the standard formula. So there is a slope that goes steadily up to the right of the of density graph, indicating that most children were had used this kind of trajectories. But when you, we looked at the experimental formula, there are two hills, two hills. Look like half of the samples, mm, used trajectories similar, similarly used by breastfed, and half of the samples were using trajectories similarly to the uh, standard formula. We used a, a statistical test to determine whether this association was right, and that was true because the kolmogorov sminov test told us uh, where there was uh, the, the slopes and the form of the, of the of the modality of this density uh, plot was um, similar or dissimilar between the sample and the only difference was observed between the standard formula and the breastfed because the breastfed is the blue one and then the standard formula goes to the right. And when we looked at the modality test, the Hartigan's deep test told us that the standard formula was a bimodal formula or a bimodal graph. So they were, it was true that there are two sets of samples in the standard formula. Um, we separated these samples and depending on their trajectories and we cataloged, we stratified these children in two different sets. The one on the right that we called the fast, the fast uh, trajectory because as you can see, the, 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 the trajectories goes to the, from the mix in blue, immediately change to ULAC or back. They immediately change at the second stage, the six month. And the slow children, the slow children at the six month, they still had the mix enterotype. There were even children that at the 12th month still had the mix enterotype, like the breastfed, like the breastfed children. So the experimental formula had produced two different trajectories. One fast, like the standard formula before, and third types change uh, in, in, in a timely manner, very fast, very fast, and slow children. And in these children, the entire types were evolving more slowly. They still kept the mix entire time, and they, they required one year to, uh, to detect that there was a change in the enterotypes in some of them. So we stratify them in fast and slow. Why do we have two different of trajectories? The fast and the slow, that is very similar to breastfed. So in this case, what, uh, what we did was um, logic, uh, lo, uh, sorry, logistic regression analysis and we could see that three variables were determining the evolution of the children. 
the uh, maternal BMI, the delivery mode, and the daycare uh, assistance of the children. And we, can, we could obtain from this formula that the slow infants, those whose trajectory is mostly similar to breastfed, are experimental formula fed infants that are having in-home care, they have been born by vaginal delivery, and they have been uh, um, born to uh, lean mothers. So that is a major inference. We can, the experimental formula produces a microbiota evolution very similar to the breastfed when these three conditions are also met by the, uh, uh, by the mother and, and the lifestyle of the, of the child. This is a major uh, um, uh, result because it's the first time that the experimental formula shows a maturation that develops as the breastfed infant when these three conditions are also met by the, by the, uh, by the family and the lifestyle of the infant. Last, the last thing we did was when we studied the compositional differences between, of course, between the formulas and we focused on the probiotics. And there were significant differences between the standard formula and the, and the experimental formula. But focusing on probiotics, we could see that uh, the experimental formula on your right uh, and the, the, the bigger dot mean, means that the data is significant. It produced a significant uh, um, fall change in the growth of the all of, of all these taxa, and specifically of Lactobacillus, that was uh, significantly uh, enriched in in the six and the twelve and the eighteen month samples, and Bifidobacterium only in the eighteen months of the children that were um, fed the experimental formula, while the standard formula only uh, influence significantly on two, on two audios. So in conclusion, what I've shown you in this experiment is that we have identified four enterotypes. One of them has never been previously described in literature, the ULAC enterotype. The enterotypes substantially differ in the composition and structure. Transitions were strongly associated with age and the type of feeding. So enterotypes are, uh, <clears throat> depend on these two variables. We detected 26 different ways of, of evolutions. A few of them were backwards retrogressions that were determined by diarrhea events in the children. The essential result of this experiment is that experimental formula fed infants evolve like breastfed infants when lean mother in home care and vaginal delivery also are uh, cofactors, uh, sorry, covariables in, in the children. And the last is that the experimental formula, uh, as I showed you, and has the lactobacillus and bifidobacterium growth in this, in this children. I hope that you enjoy this, uh, this talk and I'm waiting and I'm looking forward for your questions on, on our study. Thank you very much.